All right, final demo of the day is this elephant, African elephant to be precise, and with a focus on doing cool lighting. So I'm going to base the entire thing first in a cool gray, blue gray. Um, I've got Biv Gel Medium in it so that it goes on translucent so I can see my sketch lines underneath. I know I'm going to be working pretty dark on this and pretty heavy on the paints, so I have outlined my drawing with a marker just to help. If you were going on top of an underpainting, your, your burnt sienna underpainting, I would still start with this step and it's just going to make your value range come through so much stronger, the lighting you already figured out. Just remember that this cool gray is almost automatically going to negate that orange. So it's going to get really nice and dark in all of your values. So you might be able to skip some of the steps that I'm working on here where I am now darkening those values because I did not have an underpainting. I forgot that you did one, sorry. So I'm using a little bit of black mixed with a little bit of blue, so essentially a navy blue, a pretty heavy amount of gel medium, and I'm just quickly blocking in some of our shadows, carving out the light. So you can tell what's sitting in front of what else, and also making sure that those shadows have some texture in them and are following the direction of the wrinkles of the skin. So I do think that's one thing that's pretty important about working on the elephant is that they have all of these different textural areas. So your brush stroke should move both with the direction of motion, but also trying to, to create some organic texture that's going to feel like it's mimicking those wrinkles. You can see we're already starting to get a nice sense of the shape of the piece. I'm going to add some warm gray now. So this is a gray that has a little bit more of a brownish tint to it, and I'm mixing it with white to create a nice high end of our mids that's heading into the warms. So you'll be able to see the difference here pretty quickly and the, the color temperature. Now I'm using a flat brush with a point, an angled sash, and I'm dancing it kind of kind of using it a little bit on the point and a little bit um, to create line works that mimic those wrinkles. So you'll see me keep turning it in different ways. Here I'm using it to edge, but then I'm going to turn it sideways and create a little bit of tiny line works or little textures to, to mimic those wrinkle areas or to just make highlight areas around the outsides of things. I did find that using a pointed sash worked best for all of this. Also because they're a little stiff, so they're nice for a more painterly approach where you're kind of buffing things in. I've mixed a little bit more white and I've still got the same brush and we're going to start defining our highlights. Still got some of that gray in there, so you're seeing that it's just slowly shifting the temperature as it turns around the body and heads into the light. We're getting into a gray that feels warmer, less blue. We're just going to keep adding more white into it as we walk into the highlight area. Here I'm using the point of the brush to create those little squiggles and folds that, that mimic the wrinkles that are at the base of the ear that are coming across the face here. See how I'm feathering out each independent stroke so nothing has an even shape and a flat edge. Everything should be kind of feathered into the direction of these wrinkles. Some of those wrinkles are vertical, some of them run horizontal across the body. Because they use their trunk, it bends in every direction, so there are wrinkles to show the bending of every different direction that they can do. But the ones that are most prominent, the longer down the trunk we get, are the horizontals. So I'm highlighting those. Making sure that we understand how that eye socket fits into the head creating some highlights to show the texture on the edges of the ear where they catch light. That ridge at the top of the ear that holds the control of it. I'm using the point of the brush to put our brightest highlight in and make sure I'm controlling it as a texture and direction. Now 
Now the highlights on the legs, especially this back one, don't seem to be as textured or as in focus on the research image that I'm looking at, partially because I think of the camera. Um, but as it gets closer to you, it has more definition, more contrast, and more detail, which I do think is a good rule of thumb when painting. The things that are closer to you have the highest contrast and detail, and as things fade away, we make them a little bit softer focus. It helps us understand how things are in relation to the depth of each other. So this is a navy blue, a little bit of gel medium, and my rigor brush, which is the really long, dancy one. Gel medium helps it move for more than just like half a second. One of the main shadows I'm wanting to start by bumping up is the ones in the eyes and to bring those forward and draw attention to them. But also I'm going to start using a little bit more gel medium and less opacity and adding shadows everywhere we added highlights so that you're getting both things right next to each other is how we establish these tight little wrinkle areas. So we're working on establishing both the texture of everything, but also the general shape and relation of things. So we're playing a little bit of a balancing game. If you focus too much on only outlining the texture, you will lose the feeling of shape throughout the whole piece. If you focus too much on shape, they'll get very smooth and they won't have all of the texture. So we're kind of bouncing back and forth between them, but you can see how I've left really tight, high contrast um, shadow and highlight right next to each other on the trunk, which helps it come forward versus those wrinkles I've added to the front leg are a little bit more painterly, a little softer. The shadow and the highlight aren't right on top of each other and they're not as high contrast as they are in the trunk because I want there to feel like there's an overall shadow directly behind the trunk. So if I've created just the wrinkles everywhere, we would lose that. And the trunk and the legs would look like they had the exact same treatment. In my research image, the tail is almost to entirely in silhouette and, and like shadow. So we're just gonna go ahead and put that in very dark and very opaque. And I'm still using my rigor brush to add some texture to this leg, but it's a very quick value shift in my research image because it's got a nice amount of highlight on the outside flank. So it goes into that dark pretty quickly. So on that, I'm not focusing on blending the painterliness of it out very much. I'm gonna leave it more textured. Now you could stop here if this was kind of the color world you wanted to live in. For me, it looks a little bit under painting -y. So I've mixed some brown with a little bit of white. It's a cool brown, um, an umber, and a gel medium. And I'm using that to kind of bump up our local color and to show where we're turning into the light and we're getting warmer. I think that gray still was a little cool tone to me. So I want a little bit more realism than a blue elephant. So I'm using just a transparent layer of this white with um, gel medium, which is keeping it nice and thin, really, really thin, and patting it in on top to create more texture and also to give us a little bit more realism in the color. But I'm not covering up everything. I'm leaving my brightest highlights and my darkest shadows. I'm sort of patting it over our midtones. I do think that that kind of cost me a few of my highlights, so we're going to choose to bump a few forward again. And since that had lots of gel medium in it, it's still very wet. So as this goes into it, it's blending really nicely. Just sort of organically wet blending as we paint into it. And I'm not coating any thing entirely. I'm not, I'm leaving the variation of highlights so that has, since it's underneath things, is having a nice variety of stacked light, but I'm picking out a couple very specific highlights to pull forward. The ones we need for structural understanding. Placing in the details of those very darkest areas again. One last contrast check. This is with the navy blue, so it's also sinking that coldness again, which is helpful. You could add a little bit of a dark brown to your navy blue if you wanted. You could add, I loathe to tell you black, but you could put that in the eyes at least if you wanted. Um, but I just think that that deep navy blue, that which has a tiny amount of black in it, 
just is a nicer, more realistic shadow color than always going to black, which makes things feel so flat. This has a little more life. You can see that the lighting has felt, suddenly it feels like it got a lot stronger as we're adding these in. It's much more contrasted. So I think that's where I'm going to leave this one. I hope that that helps you out as you build your final elephant. Good luck.